Welcome to my classroom. I'm your teacher for this evening. Raylon Army. Education 321. Hopefully you had a great evening. And hopefully my music is uh, not too loud. Today, we will be talking about reconstruction. Reconstruction. Let's take some time to activate some prior knowledge to what you think Reconstruction may be. Take a look at the history of the United States and the Founding Fathers and what they've done to build a great nation that we call the United States of America. How does Reconstruction evolve into a era of building and an era of re reformation to reconciliate a battered up and slain nation. Well, today, what I want you guys to, to do is really keep in mind what was the main purpose of Reconstruction as we go through this lesson. To give an overview of what I want you to gain out of this lesson, I want you to understand what Reconstruction was, the development of Reconstruction, how it came about through the mid-1800s, or should I say the 19th century in the United States. What was its purpose? What was its goals? And what did it accomplish? This is just to inform you that there are times where things seem to be battered and we still try to help, but things don't always work. Reconstruction. Beginning in 1863, a vision that came about from Abraham Lincoln the president of all presidents or a lot of people's favorite president himself who had a vision of creating a unified nation you know rather than having two divided nations within one piece of land land territory or whatnot he, Abraham Lincoln's primary aim was to rest, was to create the restoration of national unity which, you know, he sought through a program of speedy and forgiving political reconciliation. Well, Abe Lincoln's vision was to merge, just become one, you know, become one nation, you know, that's indivisible. I mean, just think about our, you know, just think about our Pledge of Allegiance, one nation, indivisible, under God. I mean, at the end of the Civil War, Liberty the South was essentially lost. I mean, it was land torn to shreds. I mean, if you look at it, 1863, January of 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed, you know, which was, you know, the epitome of the 13th Amendment, which was the, you know, it led up to the 13th Amendment, which was the abolishment of slavery. I mean, the South relied upon stuff like that. And Abraham Lincoln took this away. But he was also trying to reach out a hand and say, look, we all should be one. We should treat everybody equally. We are equal. We are humans. Well, somebody was uneasy about that. John Wilkes Booth. He assassinated probably one of the, if not the greatest president in the United States history, um, Abraham Lincoln in um, April of 1865. I mean, after Lincoln, you know, amended the 13th Amendment in the Union, uh, after he made the Emancipation Proclamation, after he signed the Proclamation of Amnesty and Reconstruction to endure this reconstructive period, hmm, people still didn't like what he was doing, so they had to get rid of him. Well, his successor was a Southern-born Confederate state he was a confederate born senator from the state of Tennessee that was his vice president President Andrew Jackson Johnson Andrew Johnson you know 
was a guy who uh, he remained loyal to the Union, but he still had Confederate thoughts. He still tried to merge with the Confederacy because he thought that he, he really felt that the old South, how they, they ran things, state governed was the way of life. He he wanted to see blacks in civil rights, civil and political rights protected, but he was uneasy about opening the commitment and seemed to ignore it constitutional limitations on federal power because he was more so state oriented now that was a problem you know that was really an, a problem for the senate that and for the you know the house i mean this guy was literally living his own like world he he did not want to admit the 14th amendment which was allowing blacks to vote he did not want that he was you know advising southerners to reject the 14th amendment you know during this time this is now this is a time where the south is merging to the, the north well the senate and the house wasn't having it and they tried to impeach him he was the first president to be attempted to impeach be impeached ku klux klan you know they, and, and people implementing jim crow laws uh, jim crow laws were essentially a hover over black people that where they couldn't own anything or couldn't do anything and it was almost like they had to work as indentured servants or something like that, which is another form of slavery. <laughs> then you also had, you know, now in Jim Crow laws, you have black codes, which are other, like, anonymous laws and outlandish things that disallow blacks to own any kind of land or own or be out at certain times of night or anything. Or couldn't even look up at a white person's face while they're walking side by side in a, in a, in a public venue. Now, after the impeachment of, you know, uh, the attempt at impeachment of Andrew Johnson, the, the nation got fed up with him. They fed up with him. They turned to the Civil War general, a general of all generals, Ulysses S. Grant. He's going to be the person that leads us to the promised land. Very, very decorated general. Though, he was not ready. Reconstruction ended in 1877. You could say it just kind of ended into that area, just faded to black. Because if you look at it, I mean, some things was positive out of it, you took out of it, you know. But a lot of the things, in my opinion, were negative. In conclusion, Reconstruction, yes. Blacks were free. Slavery was abolished. Blacks were allowed to vote. The Union and the South com converged into becoming one nation. Yes, that was true. But there were little things involved within that. Blacks were persuaded to verse certain ways. Other than that, otherwise they would be beaten or killed or something like that. Women, women, not just black women. White women, women in general. Weren't allowed to vote at all. They weren't allowed to vote. They had to endure suffrage still. To me, it's a problem with that. We're all human. Reconstruction to me, though it did some things by law, but in reality, it was it was not what it was up to be. With this being said, I want you guys to get out of this. Reconstruction was an era to really solidify, you know, a lot of things into our beliefs of, you know, American society and how it was ran and how there were leaders who would try to attempt to make things better. Yet, it was not the era to be praised and to validate our American citizenship. Thank you.